This is a Kirkendall Barrett presentation, darling. <laughs> you can touch it if you want. Ladies, if you want to meet a man, check your storage closet. Come on, Kendall, take off your shirt and go camera shopping at Best Buy. Good shirt, but not bad shirt. Like. Yeah. Well, it was gratuitous. Yeah, it was. I like a good grizzled man sometimes. A lifetime of Hallmark. Well, hello everybody, it's your favorite day of the week. It is time for another episode of A Lifetime of Hallmark, where we talk about movies on Lifetime, the Hallmark Channel, and other places, and try to make sense of them. I am Les Kirkendall Barrett. Hello, Jason Bauer. Hello, Les Kirkendall Barrett. You sound a little uh, drowsy. We're going to perk you up. Yes, yes, and hello, Kurt Fitzpatrick. Hello, Les Kirkendall Barrett, and hello, Jason Bowers. I literally, like, when did I message you? I had literally just woken up from a nap. Wow. You are being worked to the bone. I am in the middle of, today was was the beginning of my tech week for my show, The Real Black Swan, Confessions of America's First Black Drag Queen, that opens, I start previews, on the 31st. So what, that's on Thursday? So I am in tech hell right now. So. Is it because of all the pyrotechnics in your show? All the LED right, lights? Right. The the fire, the, you know, the, the tiger that I have yeah. jumping through the hoop. The, uh, <laughs> the, the earthquake scene. Hey. Right. Do you have, because you have like a nine hour tech rehearsal, do they have craft services? Oh, good question. Kurt. Um, no, it's not a film. So yeah, so they do have treats, but not craft services. Treats. Okay. Yeah, tomorrow I have a nine-hour tech rehearsal. Nine hours. So I'm from the. Uh, I'm mostly from the Fringe Festival world, as is Kurt. It was like a one-hour tech rehearsal. Well, well they, no, it's like. Two, three hours, maybe. In some places, you get one. <laughs> so, so I was, yeah. It's so funny because, so, you know, the, the show that, I, you know, it's a, it's a legit equity theater where I'm doing my show, and I'm telling them fringe stories, and they're kind of fascinated. Like, what? Wait, what? <laughs> so I was talking to someone, and I was like, I feel like a carny. Around you guys. Because <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they're still baffled. Like, wait a minute. So if you don't finish your show in an hour, they really do cut you off. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Have we seen that happen? I, I've heard it I, happening like secondhand. I don't, don't know if I've seen that. I've seen it. Yeah. Several times. Like, a okay. heart, is it, like, harshly over? Like, in other words... Yes. It, it, yeah, they shut the lights off. I have well, no, no, I, I yeah. mean, what I'm asking is, it let, if the show's going on and the person goes over by a minute, are they doing it to them, or are they doing it to the person that... It's, it's like, okay, you're 16 minutes over now. Let's let's wrap this up. No, 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 they're doing it for a minute. Yeah, they it depends on the festival. For a minute. Like you're doing your show and a minute and they're like, okay, show's over. Thank you. And turn on the light. Okay. And music sometimes too. And there've been situations where people finish their show, like out in the lobby. Like they had a few minutes yes. left. I've heard of that happening. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 And it throws yeah, a tremendous I, uh, amount of shade because all those people are just in the lobby then lingering in as the, the next lobby. show's trying to get get seated no it is actually jason that's happened that's funny (laughs) you know i I did i did toronto once and i think it was like an afternoon show i think i had maybe what i had one person in the audience so i like this girlfriend i had she came to visit me she came to the show she's the only one in the audience she was so impressed and i think i went five minutes over like five minutes (laughs) and the and the technician you went five minutes over you i was like it's not the like my my audience is not going to take very long for them to get out. <laughs> chair on stage. Like, why are you giving? Plus, I just had one person in the audience. You really going to give me a hard time, Toronto? Jeez, wow! Canadians are supposed to be nice. So, so, 
You're right. So, right. so it was, so yeah, so I was, so I was having an issue that I didn't know was an issue. And the issue was they were like, well, why are you going too fast? Why are you going so fast? And I was like, oh, well, I wanted to make sure I was done because I didn't want to get cut off. And they were like, looked at me and they're like, what are you talking about? They're like, this is your show. Mm -hmm. We're not going to cut you off. And I'm like, oh, I need to get used to this. <laughs> That's, nice. That's awesome. Uh, anywho, well, strike's still going on. Mm -hmm. I know we got some really, we got some news about how, how the strike is affecting people. We saw that Dre... Dre DeMatteo, she's going to be on um, OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. From The Sopranos. What, um, on The Sopranos, yeah. her name was... Um... Uh, Andre, Andre Adriana. Yeah. And she was also yeah. on so Joey. Net worth, I'm seeing her net worth is $15 million, $10 million. So why does she need to be on this OnlyFans where she's buck naked? Why, why, why do you see it as something she needs to do versus something maybe she wants to do? Wants to do it. Like, I think because we know she's a famous actress that's on this well-respected re show, the fact that she's doing OnlyFans doesn't necessarily mean she's like, oh, she's broke, and the only way to get not broke is to show your body, versus maybe she's like, hey, I look good for my age. People want to pay me? Let them pay me. And I, I guess... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I just said I like it. I'm in favor. Well, yeah. I was going to say, as we learned from Black China, uh, OnlyFans is actually pretty lucrative. For sure. And when you think about it, you're making money hand over fist for not, at the, in the scheme of things, not doing much. Over a lot of fists. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So, but, but isn't the celebrity net worth, all, net worth always wrong, though? I mean, every time, time. Well, Kurt, Kurt has this know. guess. Why? Oh, oh, and you said what? she's worth ten to fifteen, depending on who you. Yeah, value. that's that's what was. Uh, that's what I see coming up here. Yeah. Well, that's well, what I wanted to see. Is she doing this for money, or is she doing it because she wants to do it? Is it body positivity, which, which I'm certainly in favor of? Because let's think about this. If she was on The Sopranos, then she was on. The Joey spinoff mm -hmm. when Joey yeah. left Friends when, when Friends ended. What else has she been on? I don't know. That's I mean that's all but I know the, her from. Yeah, the Joey show was only on for about two seasons, two seasons. maybe. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's not know. really being shown in reruns the way the uh, the main show was. Right. I think those Sopranos people. Did pretty well though. Because remember, they were like negotiating and all that kind of stuff was going on. Well, weren't they kind of like the friends people, where they kind of were like a, a unit? Maybe. I think so. But, Let's see what uh, else she did. Yeah. But yeah, hey, okay. hey, and at the end of the day, okay. if, if you got it, <laughs> why not? Yeah, she's fifty-one. She looks good. She looks, oh, she's, wait, she's 51. She looks great, actually. Yeah. Same age as Tokyo Tony. Oh, I'm the same age as well. Me uh -oh. too. It was quite a as year. Tokyo Tony? Yes. We're I'm older age. than Tokyo Tony? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I'm still recovering from the fact that I was watching Sunset Boulevard the other day, and they were talking about how old Norma Desmond was, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm older than Norma Desmond. Well, we're all like, older than, than the Golden Girls were when that show started. Oh, no, we are? Because yes. I think they're all supposed to be like, except for Sophia, I think they're all supposed to be like in their late 40s. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yes. Yes, they were. They were the late 40s. Wow. Yeah. Things were different then. Or, or, or like 50 tops. Wow, I didn't. I know. They were I know. No older than fifty when they started. I know Wilford Brimley was a lot younger than he looked. Yep. Yes. Yep. Wilford Brimley did some hard living. Hmm. Well, cocoon. We're older than people on cocoon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nah, yep. I'm not older than. Wilford Brimley Jessica was 49 Ann. when he was casting Cocoon. We've talked oh, about that no. here in this show. We talked yes. about it on this show. 
Uh, yes, I remember that conversation. I'm a young stud. I'm not some cocoon person. Ha, what? Well, that, that's rude that you're saying. You don't think that Wilfer Brimley pulled some serious tail back in the day? Oh, you you know he did. Oh, that mustache drove r- women w- wild. Oatmeal? Yeah. Oatmeal money. Yeah. Right? Oatmeal money. He was, he could, he, yeah, he was the Quaker Oats man. He was... It's a bread from that. The cocoon. He was the, the grandpa on uh, Our House, which starred yeah, Deidre Hall and still. Shannon Doherty and Chad Allen. Right. Uh, I remember that. What if what if Wolford Brimley was like um, Brad Pitt on um, Benjamin Button and he was just born looking like an old man? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were saying Brad Pitt in uh, <laughs> Thelma and Louise. <laughs> That's quite a thing to imagine. Yeah, but maybe. No, like, Benjamin, remember Benjamin Button? He was born. Yeah. He was like an old man. Yeah. So you think like yeah. Wilford Brimley? He's just aging backwards. And is eventually going to look like uh, Timothy Chalamet or something? Right. Or no? I, I don't. He, I think he died. No, he didn't. Didn't he? No. Who, Timothy Wilford Chalamet? Brimley? Oh, Wilford Brimley no, died. Wilford yeah. Brimley. Yeah. yeah Wilford Brimley's he, he dead. Yeah. Die. Yeah. Yeah. I know Timothy Chalamet is alive. I thought. Yeah. Wilf, Wilford Brimley died. Yeah. But no, but uh, oh, I'm thinking maybe well, like he was born looking like an old man, and he just stayed like one age his entire life. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Or like, remember Mork and Mindy when like he had a baby and it was yeah. Jonathan Winters? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he patched out of an egg. And it was Jonathan Winters. And yeah, he was like an ma- old man, and he was aging backwards. Yes. Ah. Yeah. It well, that, that's actually a good segue into this this week's uh, subject of our podcast because Mork and Mindy was a spinoff of Happy Days as was Laverne and Shirley and all three of them had animated television show counterparts uh, back in the early 80s. But before we talk about this, oh, do we have any, we mentioned her, Black China News. Doing a piece of China. 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 I'm talking China. The Black China Report. Here's Kurt Fitzpatrick. Yeah, recent news oh. with Black China. This is from page six and some other sources, which I'll cite. Uh, Tyga tells Black China to stick to her three day schedule after she files custody case for child support. Uh, Tyga is slamming ex-Black China for attempting to establish paternity and collect child support for her son, King Cairo. Ten years ten years later, nah, stick to your schedule. Saturday to Monday, he wrote in the comments section of a post shared by the Shade Room Friday. <laughs> the Rack City Rapper's remarks came shortly after news surfaced that China, real name Angela White, filed a custody case in an attempt to put Tyga on child support for their 10-year son. According to legal documents obtained by Page Six, the former reality star asked the court in a July 24th filing for joint legal and physical custody of their son to be split between his parents. China 35 also included unknown details about King's current living situation and what she thinks should be done for the best interest of the child. Regarding child support, the document states the court may make orders for support of the children and issue an earnings assignment without further notice to either party. Okay, so now listen to this. Uh, Last year, Tyga, whose real name is Michael Ray Stevenson, Laughed off his ex's complaint. <laughs> he left off her complaints that she receives no support for him or Rob Kardashian, the father of her daughter. Um, I pay 40K a year for my son's school, and he lives with me Monday to Saturday. Why would I pay child support? LOL, the rapper 32, previously wrote in the Shade Room's comments section in March 2022. Kardashian 36 echoed. Tiger's sentiments at the time, writing, I pay 37K a year for my daughter's school uh, and handle every single medical expense. I pay for extracurricular activities. I have my daughter from Tuesday to Saturday. Why would I pay child support? So, of course, Tiger noticed the uh, 37K versus the 40K. And he says um, he, he couldn't help notice a slight difference between their tuition rates. He later uh, tagged Kardashian and asked how you pay 30k less let me know the plug um, the plug China, I guess he, he wants to know what school the hookup know you know well, yeah while, while China has remained mum about her recent filing her mother Tokyo Tony defended her daughter's decision to get financial support from Tyga T- at Tyga you should be paying child support she wrote 
in the comment section, this is how these people communicate. I love uh, this. Of, a, of a post from the, from a blog, the neighborhood talk. She said, what kind of man are you? She never asked you for a dime for her son. You should be ashamed of yourself. Why are you putting pressure where it doesn't have to be? In a second comment, the 51 year old alleged Tiger does not have full custody of my grandson. He has never paid child support in 11 years. It's about time. This boy is growing. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. I love this. I, who, big accusations, controversies. Yeah. I, I am not usually a fan of, um, of entertainment news stories that will cite a tweet or an Instagram post from a celebrity and then do a whole story about this post and what it means when you know what it means because you saw the post. But I like this because the writer of it went and didn't just post, like, find the main things they posted. They found them commenting on other people's commenters. They just dug and dug and dug till they found these, like, little nuggets to have them dig at each other. They did. I should give credit. We don't usually give credit to the authors, but this is by this article is written by Tamatha Ryan and Eileen Reslin. Good work, ladies. Yes, good work. <laughs> Oh my gosh, before we get started, we have a new listener. Okay, so get this. So my friend Jennifer, hi Jennifer, who took hi. my husband and I as her guest to Boy George last night, which is a whole different story, was telling me that she was at one of her work meetings and she shared knowledge about our co our um podcast with one of her coworkers. And her coworker had a four-hour drive, and she listened to our podcast for four hours. Oh, that's and she amazing. Loved us. Oh, my gosh. What's her name? Her name is Patricia. Hi, Patricia. Thanks for listening. So, Hi, yeah, Patricia, Patricia last, um, last week, Patricia started listening, and she's like, she's one of us, one of us. I love to <laughs> nice. stories like that, too. <laughs> you know, I was going to tell you guys, I listened to our podcast uh, this past week, and I, and I was laughing. Oh, oh, we were funny. We're pretty, we're pretty funny, yeah. And Good. I have a particularly, I have a deep voice. I don't sound like um, Morris Day. He's got kind of a high. He's like, ha ah, mm-hmm. ha. My, my voice is. I, I noticed my voice is a bit deep. Wait, <laughs> that's good. That's good resonance it carries. Right, but yeah. So, so I, I always love it. Like when our listenership grows, I like that. That's good. I'm, uh, that's a good news. Okay. Well, but t- anyway, tell your so- friends that now the guys are reviewing super random pieces of pop culture from your past that you probably don't remember. Well, I mean, and, you know, we can't – it. and at the end of the day, you know, we, we discussed this last week. And also, we really seriously technically can't talk about the current Hallmark movies anyway. Yeah. But I'm having fun like doing these these about. having fun doing these little off road excursions yeah. we're doing. Yeah, I I, I can't believe uh, 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 today's program. I couldn't believe what I was watching. Yeah, I couldn't either. Yeah. <laughs> it, it I I actually have doesn't... a theory about this and re- of relating to the last actor's strike. I have a theory. So for listeners this... who don't who don't know, uh, no, it, okay. oh sorry. Okay. Well, I was just going to say this. This doesn't fit in with the reality that I live in, in today. It was jarring. <laughs> so, so what we were so what we're talking about is we watched because since you know we discussed last week we're doing something a little different for a little while, um, especially you know for several reasons and especially since the strike is going on. So we're talking about like you know obscure TV shows from yesteryear. Mm-hmm. And so today we are talking, I didn't know if you knew this or not, but Laverne and Shirley had a cartoon. Yeah. So my first question, so and, and the premise is Laverne and Shirley are in the army. Now what I love about cartoons, these cartoons, and I don't know if they still do this, in the opening credits, they give you the whole rundown and set it up for you. Yeah. That's, I think that's a little bit a product of trying to fill out 30 minutes of programming along with it's kids programming. So they're not spending as much money on it. So they're really trying to stretch out the time. Like the the opening credit sequence was like really long. The, the, the 
sort of preview to the episode was a minute and 20 seconds because I clocked it. So it, it, it's a while before you even get into the show. And yeah, so, so you know, and I was, it's so funny because now that we're looking for shows, I've been looking for shows like um, I watched the I Dream of Genie cartoon. And yeah, it was the kind of the same where the, in the opening thing, it's all set up. So, you know, how, what happened, why they are where they are. And it's good. It's like, you, so you go in knowing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think you guys are overstating this because I don't think the opening of this show explained too much. You, you see, you see like a spaceship and then some green thing comes, it comes in. Well, let, let, let's, sure. let's, because remember, they, it was like a whole setup and they're like, they basically wanted to meet dudes. So they joined the army. They're really, I know. Hypnotized. <laughs> yeah. And, and this program, it reminds me of all quiet on the Western front because they, they kind of go into the, the military expecting one thing, and it becomes this whole other thing that they could did not expect at all. Well, th there well, was that was a a comedy genre at that time was women getting in the military and it not making any sense that they would join, such as Private oh. Benjamin, such as this was based on an earlier episode of the the live action Lever Laverne and Shirley, where they did I, I think accidentally join the army. Yes. <laughs> Private Benjamin is one of my favorite movies of all time. I always say that if I were to join the military, I would be Judy Benjamin. So, and, and you're right. It was like a genre, like military movies, comedy military movies and shows. It w They were a genre for a while, like Stripes. Remember Stripes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, um, yeah, Private Benjamin. And then Private Benjamin was a TV show. Briefly, too. Yep, it was. Oh, right. With Lorna Patterson. Yep. Yes. She was in it from Airplane. And then MASH, of course. Oh, MASH was a popular TV show back then. There's one where Richard Pryor was a prisoner of war. Remember that movie? Oh, Called, not uh, really. Some Kind of Hero. Oh, I remember Hogan's Heroes. <laughs> no, this was called Some Kind of Hero. He's in, like, Vietnam, and it becomes a prisoner of war. M. Oh. Argo, Argo Kidder, isn't it? Oh, that's a that's a that's a choice. That's a casting <laughs> choice with those two. I think those two had a had a thing in real life too. Well, didn't Richard Pryor like you know? Do like he based, didn't he kind of go through Hollywood pretty much? Oh, I don't know. He had like seven wives, right? He was married yeah. like seven times or something. Yeah. Like and wasn't like there a story a few years ago of someone saying that they had, it was a man saying that they had had a relationship with Richard? Yeah. And yeah. and the family did, and I feel like the family here. didn't really deny it either. Paul Mooney said that, Yeah, I believe. Something Paul Mooney that. had a relationship with him? A Paul Mooney. Or knew somebody. Did somebody say this? Did I hear who, what was the source on this? It might have been his daughter. It might have been one of his kids that said his, this. His daughter? I think this was a Mark Maron interview, but I can't remember who Mark Maron was interviewing. It was something about it may have been one of his kids. See, now I got to Google it because I'm a, I'm a uh, Mark so Maron fan. I don't remember all the details. I'm, I'm going right. to stop now. But yeah, I, was, I listen to yeah. Mark Maron. I'm going to, when we're done with this podcast i'm gonna do some googling oh you know who it was it was he uh mark Marin interviewed like richard Pryor's last wife i think that's who it was okay uh-huh she told a story about paul Mooney. oh well well you know which prior which prior live in concert is amazing yeah yeah but but the, yeah so so yeah this cartoon i too because I just, I watched it before my nap, mm -hmm. and after watching this show, that's when I was like, I need to lay down. <laughs> I need that nap. No, it was just jarring to, like, it just what, just the reality that I'm living in. And to just sit and watch this, it was just a strange experience. I, but maybe refreshing. I remember even as a kid thinking, <laughs> I don't understand why they're in the army and why a pig is their sergeant, but I, I like these characters, so I'll watch. And, and that's really all that it was. And watching this episode, especially after seeing the Barbie movie, which kind of does this too, is it 
it's almost as if it writes the story as if it's actually being crafted by a bunch of kids right now. Like, oh, and then Laverne and Shirley are in the army, but their sergeant, who's also a pig, uh, gets mad at them, and then they end up in a spaceship, and all these like just random stream of consciousness weird things end up in this show. So my first yeah. question is, what were they smoking? Because how do you, it's like, you know, let's, okay, yeah, like, you know, hey, executives, we have this idea. So we're going to get Laverne and Shirley, but they're not going to be the one, two, three, four, hot and stuff incorporated Laverne and Shirley. They're going to be in the army. And they're going to have a sergeant. But, you know, is it going to be a, a female sergeant like Eileen Brennan on Private Benjamin? No. Is it going to be a male sergeant like Sergeant Carter on Gomer Pyle? No. No. It's going to be a pig. Yeah. A talking pig. Talking pigs. A so sergeant a squeal. Pig had a female voice, too. Yeah. No, that was not a female voice. It was a female doing a, a, an impression of a man's voice, I believe is yeah. what that was. Cause and the, the pig kind of talked like this. Oh, that, that did not sound good. That And <laughs> edit at that one out. point, which we get into, <laughs> uh, Shirley pig shamed them. Yeah. Well, you this them. what I, yes. I thought was fantastic <laughs> and absurd about this whole thing is Laverne and Shirley actively choose to join the military, yet the entire time Laverne is defiant against every order she's given. Why well, right. should be court martialed? Yeah, I mean, she really the, the pig is a superior to them, and they're throwing and they're th so that'd be like you go into the military and you're throwing your sergeant in the air. You're into locking a your sergeant in the in a ship. You 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 would be like thrown in the stockade for this. Well, you'd also get in trouble for wearing military a giant prison. L on your government issued <laughs> uniform. Like, yeah. Military uniform. Yeah. Yeah. That either. <laughs> was, was this this was released during peacetime, right? They weren't in like Korea. <laughs> we we're, were in Korea, but this was like station. we were in the Cold War. Uh, also, oh, so the, I, my theory about this is this uh, show came, it premiered in November of 1981. Now, the last time the actors oh, okay. had a big strike was in 1980. And so oh. my theory is that this show and the Happy Days cartoon initially got greenlit as maybe sort of a workaround so they could still have Happy Days and Laverne and Shirley on the schedule because these actors that they're doing voiceover, that's not the same contract as the film and TV contract. Oh, I don't know sense. if that's true, but sort of the timing of it would seem to suggest that this was called Laverne and Shirley. It wasn't Laverne and Shirley and in the army. It was just Laverne and Shirley. And, and there was, there was no only fans back then. So it had to do something. Yeah. I'm looking and, to see if they could have been involved in any kind of, Conflicts. I don't think much was going on in 1981 in terms of that. And they had, right. um, okay, um, yeah. uh, in the credits, if you look at the end credits, it doesn't say that Sidney Williams and Penny Marshall are the stars. They can't, they build all of the voice actors together, and then it said guest appearances in Liver and Shirley, Sidney Williams, Penny Marshall. In other words, they were guest stars on the show they starred on. That's weird. Oh. Why was that? I don't know. That's that's why I'm going with this wild theory. Okay. No, but but that that makes total sense though. That makes total sense. Um Okay, well it's um, called the Vernon Shirley in the Army, episode one, Invasion of the Booby Hatchers. Yeah. Yes. Which is jarring yes. in and of itself. And it starts out with Laverne and Shirley, and they're digging foxholes. Well, they join in the opening credits. It seems like they joined the army because they thought that the recruiter guy was um, 
charming. <laughs> they, yeah, so, they, they got digmatized, and he's like signed these papers. This so they joined like, the for, army. Uh, also supporting my theory that this may have been intended to be a replacement for the the regular show temporarily. The humor here is seemingly aimed much more at adults, which you didn't do back yeah. then. There's a yeah. lot of like man chasing jokes and even them kind of fucking each other over at one point in the episode. Oh, for a guy. For a yeah, guy. For a guy. Yeah. This lady's won it. Yeah. So 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 they're digging a foxhole and then the pig comes and the pig they did something and the pig was like, I'm gonna tell on you. Like the pig was gonna tattle on them. He's gonna tell like a, a a superior. He's yeah. a sergeant, right? The the pig's a sergeant. So he's gonna yeah. tell a lieutenant or five star general or something about that. What's going on? So he tells on them, and then Laverne and Shirley get in trouble, and their punishment is they have to watch this top secret thing that's under like a curtain. <laughs> that's their punishment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it turned out that the top secret thing was a rocket. And there was a button on the door, and Laverne or Shirley thought it was a doorbell. Laverne. Laverne thought it was a doorbell. So she pressed the button, and it opened up. And they walked in, and then Shirley started pressing buttons, and they took off into space. Yes. <laughs> Well, what, what's amazing about this is they, they initially locked, locked Sergeant Squealy in there, then realized, oh, we're probably going to get in trouble. Let's let him out. Go in there. He had pressed some buttons. So sure is like, you got that all wrong. It starts moving. And even though she has no experience piloting a rocket, neither does this pig. But here we go. They just launch right. into space. Right. <laughs> right. So I, wonder if this was, <laughs> I wonder if a young Elam... Musk was watching the show. He's about our age. Yeah. He was probably watching this the show and it, it inspired him to create SpaceX. Maybe. Maybe. Mm-hmm. So so that's so not then, even that strange. Well, wait till you because the next episode, that pig becomes really, really racist and xenophobic and uh just goes down a rabbit right. hole. So I think this it might be following a what trajectory. Did you say that was racist. I don't know. <laughs> It's saying racist. Uh, just like the idea of a pig being racist. <laughs> so, so, oh, so then the spaceship, they fly. So the spaceship takes off and then they're in outer space and then they go, and the pig starts driving the space. Like he knows how to, to drive a spaceship. Mm-hmm. And they go into a meteor shower. Because I guess in the army, they teach you how to fly a spaceship. Yeah, they call it a space avalanche. Yeah. Well, and then, so, so then they they hear like a voice comes over their intercom. Well, no, first there's a UFO. This show has challenges with plausibility. Yeah. Um, so they're they're piloting this this thing mm-hmm. on, on their own, which I think you almost have to be like an engineer to know how to do that. Well, maybe they are. Uh, and then like an alien ship appears. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I and think then, at one point, aren't they near Jupiter or somewhere like that? This they were, they this land on Venus at one point. Yeah, they're Venus. Venus. They land the on Venus. But this, yeah, but they are, they are all super confident in flying this rocket. And right. they made it to Venus. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> so, so then a voice comes over their intercom from the alien ship, and they're like, con- all they're concerned about is, well, the voice sounds hot. So let's go out, and, let's go out with them. It's a very zen show because I'd be <laughs> I'd be a little stressed in this situation. <laughs> oh no, they were just happy that he sounded like a hot guy. Hmm. So, so, so this next part, they were like, like I'm just thinking about like, the well, logic of that. I, I'm just thinking of the logic of that in the moment. Like you just went through this really harrowing thing. Like you accidentally fl- flew a rocket into space. You're being <laughs> shot at by aliens, but then you hear a voice. You're like, oh. Yeah, I kind of want to get laid right now. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> and, and this is yet, important they, in this moment. They, 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 they were fighting over him, and they're like, okay, well, let's flip a coin. And they didn't have a coin. And they're like, well, let's flip the pig. 
<laughs> With the they heads or they're like, heads or tails, <laughs> we don't have a coin, but he has the head and a tail, let's flip him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and they did. I can imagine if you did that to your boss. Right? <laughs> like, Laverne um, just rails so- against authority. So Venus is 38 million miles from Earth. Just to well, so keep things in perspective. Made it in five <laughs> minutes, less than five minutes. So, so they, so they, they pick, they flip the pig, and Laverne wins. I oh, know Shirley wins. Shirley wins the date. Yeah, yeah. Shirley gets to go out with the guy. Which where were they going to go? They, they were in a. They're in a UFO at this point, and then they're going to go out on it. They're, they're, she's going to go out with a, 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 with a, a random guy. Also, right. where were if, they going to go? If this episode of television were were made now, there would be a conversation of why does she think that just because she wants a date with this person that she suddenly deserves one, <laughs> and is just right. taking it. Oh yeah, so he might not. He may, he may not be interested. They're they're taking away the agency of this alien they haven't met. <laughs> yeah this is a, it's a bit problematic hashtag alien <laughs> so so the alien shows up at the door and then they discriminate against him well surely thinks he's a no-go was, it, yes disagree i find the, the alien was very masculine I mean, I don't know. He, he, he's, he's you think Shirley him. likes masculine? She dated Carmine Ragusa. Right. Uh-huh. And didn't the alien have like okay. four, he had four hands or something? Yeah, Shirley doesn't need Imagine that. what we could do with that. She's got her own hands. And, and so and the, and the, this is the kind of friend that Shirley is. Shirley's like, oh, I think he's ugly. You you take him, Laverne. You can have he's him. He's ugly. He had well, nice she features. tricked Laverne. She, like, she shuts the door on the uggo. It's like, Laverne, actually, I, yeah, I had a change of heart. I, I cheated at that contest <laughs> to win, you know, to win this man's ownership in my heart. But you take him instead. Oh, right. We, we lost, oh, you lost me. Oh, yeah, Jason, where'd you go? I don't know. I'm here. We're watching, we're watching video on our side. I can't see you. Well, I think you're coming. Oh, there, there you are. Okay, good. Oh, so the alien was like, hey, ladies, I'm looking for a human. Yeah. So this, there's a lot That's of, a like, uh, ex- expectation of um, sort of ruling over someone and also about uh, human trafficking. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Because they're like, I'm, he's like, I'm looking, I'm looking for a human. And then they lied, and they were like, well, we're not a human. And they pointed to the pig. They're like, he's a human. I wonder if that's a reference to Animal Farm, uh, George Orwell. Because you remember, like, the pigs kind of, like, took over for the humans in, in Animal Farm? Maybe. You think that, that uh, the writers of the Laverne and Shirley army with the pig as the sergeant cartoon is like, George Orwell. That's what the kids want. Oh, no. I'm giving it, <laughs> giving it the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> oh, my God. So then the alien, the alien is like, what do you think I am, stupid? I know that's a pig. <laughs> well, he knows he that's know a pig. He what like. He didn't know what humans look like, but he knew what a pig looked like. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I, I've got to be on board. I don't think I have any other choice. <laughs> he, he's like, I know what a pig looks like. That is not a human. That's a pig. What were their names? There's an aliens. The one, the one's name was Farrakhan, and the other, the other was. I don't uh, think it was Farrakhan. Not Farrakhan. <laughs> the other was Venik. <laughs> I wrote one of the names. Zarkon was one of them. Zar- Zarkon, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Zarkon. Was Farrakhan. And there was like a flying robot we meet soon named uh, Gamma okay, yeah, Six. Yeah, we wouldn't want to get yeah. too far ahead of ourselves. <laughs> Okay. So, oh, so then the alien like kidnaps. Like, he now kidnaps Laverne and Shirley. Why did the alien need humans? Because they were supposed to help him get to invade Earth. Invade Earth. Get to Earth so they can invade it. Yeah. Oh. 
Okay. So that's why he kidnaps them. And he's like, you're going to help me invade Earth and kidnaps them. And then puts them in a cell mm -hmm. with, a ro with a robot. And so then this robot has like special powers. Oh, first of all, did you get the Laverne, Laverne's introducing them, they're introducing themselves to the robot and she's like, hi, I'm Laverne and I'm an eight and a half and this is Shirley and she's a five. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And Shirley was, and the, the animated Shirley was kind of hot, I thought. <laughs> yeah. She, she uh, was reminiscent of Betty Rubble. That's funny. Which and Sometimes this cartoon characters are hot. This was a Hanna Barbera cartoon. Oh, so that so that's so she was in. They were in the Flintstones family. Then. Yeah, for sure. Sort of. But that was but the Stone did, Age. But I did love and and I did love though. Like and the robot was like, "Wait, what are you talking about?" And then Shirley's like, "How dare you call me a five? Yeah, that's kind of insulting. Yeah. But then, so this is where we find out the, the robot has special powers where they just have to think of things and the robot can produce it. Sort of like Janet on The Good yeah. Place. Yeah. So did they, did they think themselves out of the cap captivity? Nope. Did they think themselves back to Earth? Nope. Did they think about world peace? Nope. They thought about getting all of their furniture from their old apartment and furnishing the prison cell. Yeah, but w you've moved before. That is a pain in the ass. Well, the, 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 even though they weren't told they had a limited number of wishes, Laverne did it like item by item rather than just, let me just think of the whole furnished thing. That would be one, one task. And, and Shirley just wished for Boo Boo Kitty. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Boo Boo Kitty made an appearance in the cartoon. Was that on the show? Yeah. For those listeners who don't know, during the Laverne and Shirley TV show, the live TV show, Shirley had a, a stuffed cat named Boo Boo Kitty. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't recall that. You don't recall Boo Boo Kitty? Oh, Kurt. Kurt. No, I don't. Boo Boo Kitty was in every episode. <laughs> that evaporated from my memory. I did, I did watch Laverne and Shirley here and there. But Boo Boo Kitty was an important part of the show. I remember they, they go to their class reunion and Laverne's like, hey, there's a whole table full of guys I made out with over there. And they, they all hold up these little flags with the L on it and wave them around. <laughs> <laughs> Laverne. Oh, so, so they furnish the cell and then the robot is like, I'm exhausted. I can't do anymore. Well, he could do one more. Right. Um, so they get Squealy back. But it's yeah, kind of by yeah. accident. They're like, oh, I wish Squealy could see us now. Mm -hmm. was there, there was their last wish. Back. It was yeah, their last was, wish. And then she said that. And then she's like, damn it. I used my last wish to get Squealy back. But it saves Squealy's life because yeah. he's about, it's like some robot is about ready to swallow him up. Yeah. The robot's about, about ready to bite down. I do really like these aliens, their, the technology they have of the flying robots. Not just like a drone, but it's like a full-on talking robot that flies. Yeah. Well done. Oh, yeah. so, so, the, so our robot friend, once they call Squealy in, I didn't get this. But so since the Squealy came in, Laverne and Shirley had a certain amount of wishes. So I guess when Squealy came in, his wishes started from scratch. No, because it wasn't no, a genie. He, it wasn't a limited number of wishes. They just wished too much too soon and sort of shorted Squealy out. So when Squealy, Squealy came in, the, uh, yeah, Sergeant Squealy, yeah, the uh, the robot, yeah, the robot. Wishes, but but so when Sar uh, when Sergeant Squealy eventually did get there. Um, they squealy basically just starts barking orders and sort of reprimands this robot into not being tired anymore. I just like hearing you, I just like hearing you explain this. It sounds like you're defending a thesis. <laughs> <laughs> Thought a lot about this episode. It's squealy. <laughs> Show is nuts, and, and I it loved it. Appeared. Oh, and then so 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 then. 
uh, so they get out of the prison and then the robot's like, can you think me home? Yeah. That's poignant. And they it did. was. It was this like the heartbreaking moment. I was like, aw. They just made where a friend. Did home to? What? Shirley did, did knew. Where Shirley knew where he was from. Did we see his home? No, but did? Shirley, no. he's like, can you think me home? And Shirley's like, oh, yeah, you live at blah, 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 blah. And he's Hope like, right how did you know that? Yeah, Laverne asked how she knew that, and Shirley's answer was kind of a smart-ass answer. Yeah, but Shirley knew exactly where he lived, and she thought him home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they probably presumed he was dead in his home. He probably shocked everybody. Maybe. Well, because he was in prison. Because he not our problem. He was in prison because he was thinking too fast. You know how a boy crazy like, Laverne and Shirley like, were. Do, do you think Shirley hooked up with Gamma Six? I would not be surprised. The, I don't know. But we, when I think about stuff like that, I just think, well, it's not my problem. And I feel like a relief. <laughs> like, I don't have to worry. These about cartoons that. were the horniest <laughs> cartoons I have ever seen. <laughs> Oh, okay. Where are so we at? now, <laughs> Earth is in the process of being, and they're going to invade it. Mm-hmm. So the Laverne and Shirley are like, okay, go and protect Earth. So then, the the rocket left them, so they got jetpacks and helmets, and helmets. And so then they're in their jetpacks and helmets. And then all of a sudden, like a space bird, <laughs> the crap. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm saying, like know, every every every, every plot point was just it. It wasn't so wacky that you're like, oh my god, what are they on? It was just wacky in the sense of like, and then a bird comes, and then and then there's an explosion in the merry-go-round, and then we all had cake. Right. Well, I like that part. But I don't. The bird. Yeah. Are we allowed to ask bird how? A, got them. Go ahead. Are we allowed to ask how a bird can exist in wherever they are in the solar system? They're somewhere between Earth and. And it was a Jupiter. space bird. It was a very large space, space bird. Um, and there They're were many birds? times when they were in outer space where they didn't need like pressurized suits. So maybe the birds didn't in that atmosphere either. Maybe. Nothing lives out there. Well, clearly that's oh, not true, Kurt. Oh, jeez, I don't know. It's bird, a space bird. Maybe something too. does. Who knows? I'm not out there. So, so then they save they save her from the bird, and then the pig Squealy has a plan. So they're gonna they're gonna save the world. Okay. And so so the, oh, that's right. so, the, so the next plan, uh, the alien. So Shirley then dresses like an alien, like a sex, like an alien, and they think she's sexy. Mm-hmm. I wasn't turned on by that because you didn't look like the alien. She yeah. made herself look like the alien who was, turned and they on were by all it. like, "Hey, who's this?" Yeah, they were all like, "Hot <laughs> cha," and she had like a sexy voice, and she was like. Hey, it's me. It's and they were, he was into it. Yeah, he was hey, going for it. So, yes. So. Yeah, it's around the gate and everything. Sarkom wants to show yeah. her his gamma six. Damn. Yeah, she's like, she's like, you want? It's Shirley's all. You want to go out for drinks? And they were gonna but go, they, you know, and and but then she kind of baited him, and then like turned the tables and like locked him up. Yeah, uh, Laverne and the Squealy have like a box. I guess it's a wooden box. It's got to be something heavy. And they just drop it on him. Now he's like trapped in a box. Yeah. Yeah. And then didn't they have a net too? Yeah, the net so. comes in a little bit later. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the box looked like a giant refrigerator box. And I'm like, well, that's convenient that they had that there. Yeah. I, I guess it made him stay put. And then... And then, um, so they lock him up, and then they're with another alien. And Shirley's still in her sexy alien outfit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a blue one. There's a green yeah. one, and there's a blue one. And Shirley, Shirley was green, too. It's diverse. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, right. So well, he says to her because Shirley Shirley is trying to become look look like an alien. So the blue alien says, "Why do you look so pale?" Yeah. <laughs> what was her reason? She had a reason for it. It's stressed about invading planets or something like that. Yeah, I'm stress. The colors left my the pigment the pigments left my face. And then also like to avoid the in- invading, she surely suggests that you know, like instead of invading, why don't we visit uh, Earth? Just visit Earth and have a hamburger and roller skate a little. Yeah, that's what she yeah, She did say a hamburger and roller skate a little. This is like a weird dream that you'd have. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, uh, what is this? They told the, they told the pig. Someone said the pig was going to go hog wild. Yes, I think that was um, a, a line in this program. There were a lot yeah. of of um, of uh, pig puns. Yeah. Because the, oh okay then so they get on the ship and then the ship like doesn't the ship like spit them out? It it well, spit, spit they get something. back in the rocket and the rocket gets spit out so then they land in the rocket. Yeah, yeah the aliens will be back though. They said they said we will be back to conquer Earth. Yeah, and then Squealy said, "Well, you don't want to hog up all the credit." <laughs> and then the rocket actually, this gigantic rocket fell on top of a pig yeah. and he lived. Yeah. Squealy so. is superhuman. Yeah. He's a super pig. So this is what I want. This is now what I wonder. Because they saved the world, right? Mm-hmm. But then are they going to get in right. trouble for like, because they were supposed to be guarding this top secret thing that they launched into outer space. Are they in trouble now? Well, also, we don't know if they really saved the world. These aliens, they, they may have enhanced the world. They may have had cures to diseases and different things like that. Well, they were mad, though. They are like, we're, we're going to be back. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I yeah. think given the kinds of arcs that you see in children's programming, there are going to be repercussions that we're going to need to re- return to in future episodes. They were, they were basically like, sleep with one eye open, because we're not done with yeah, it. They're mad now. We're not coming with any cures this time. So I was disappointed, though, that they didn't go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Schlazel. I was hoping for that. Well, they weren't working at uh, the brewery, though. No, they were in the army. I'm a little surprised that, like, if your premise is you're in the army, do army stuff. Or you blast they were. They were space. digging yeah. a foxhole. Remember, they, they were, were put on that top secret what, mission what to guard something they didn't know what they were guarding, but it was only covered by a sheet. Come on, man. Yeah. But most of this, that's, some, that's some sheet. Huh? <laughs> that's one of those sheets, like, you make your bed, but you've got, like, a sheet that's, like, way too big for the beds. You're, like, yeah. stuffing it under the, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. But no, but, but besides that. Uh, you know, they should have been like, oh, oh, they should have been on the ground. I don't know. They should have been. I think this was during the like, uh, uh, the Iran uh, uh, hostage hostage crisis. They could have been involved with that or something. Yeah, because that kept going NATO. Young children watching Saturday morning cartoons, they want the Iran Contra crisis woven into no, the fabric of what I mean. The, 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 I, I ran hostage. I mean, uh, yeah. you said, I, I, you said, I think I said Contra, but either way. The uh, yeah. that's they want that woven into their or... into their cartoons. Well, 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 or they could have been like with the premise. Well, it was Hanna Barbera, so they could have gone to the Hanna Barbera world. The second season they did combine. So the first season they had Laverne and Shirley. Wait, they had two seasons of this. Yeah, first season was Laverne and Shirley. And uh, they also had the Happy Days one where they're in outer space. The third, the second season, uh, they combine the Happy Days and Laverne and Shirley world so that Fonzie and the gang from the cartoon were working in the garage servicing stuff on, on the Laverne and Shirley cartoon. And they somehow worked in Mork. So it was all three of them in a show together. Oh, my. So were Laverne and Shirley still in the army? They, the yeah, the season? only thing that, that stayed consistent was that Laverne and Shirley were in the army. They were still in the army, okay. Yeah. Yeah, they weren't going to be, like, honorably 
discharge or anything like that. No. So how did Mork, was Mork just on the base? Uh, I actually don't remember. I don't know how he worked in. I just know that they have storylines where they would overlap. Because think about it, they were like the three biggest shows on ABC for several years, so they wanted to capitalize on that. Right. No, of course. I have a far-fetched connection to this Laverne and Shirley show oh. that we saw. Okay. Um, oh, dear. One of the, get ready. Um, one of the people who's credited in the voices – is Rene Aubergines, whatever. Aubergines. I was his stand-in one time on the, what was that show? Madam Secretary. Oh. I was a stand-in. Yeah, we've talked about that on this show. I love it. Yeah, Didi Khan, also yes. from Benson, was in the voice cast of this show at one point. And in this and very Dees. episode, Rick Dees, who I worked for. Yeah. Oh, you work for Rick Dees? Oh, I wow. work for Rick Dees, yeah. He, he and his wife, Julie, are both in the credits. Helen Hunt was once uh, oh. on one state of voice in the show. Are you serious? Serious. You know what cartoon we should watch? Did you ever watch the Flintstones meet the Jetsons? Yes. Yeah. When they went on the Jet, the Jetsons went on vacation. <laughs> they went to Bedrock. Yeah. <laughs> went to Bedrock. How did this happen? They, because. Uh, The Jetsons were like, let's go on vacation. And you could have a vacation where you could go, instead of going to a different country, you could time travel on your vacation. Oh. So then they went, all I remember, they went to Bedrock, and then they somehow met Joan Rivers. Oh, I remember that too, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's that's ridiculous. Joan Rivers was there. They're trying too hard. (laughs) Can't deal with it. Joan Rivers. I thought the show was like on in like the early eighties. Yeah. I guess Joan Rivers was around, kind of a huge name. Joan back Rivers then. was around. A she was. She was in the sixties. Oh, oh, the eighties oh. wasn't that like the height of Joan Rivers' popularity? For sure. I think the mid eighties. Yeah, she kept it going. Anyway, well, hmm. if you want to find me. We don't know what we're going to do next. <laughs> this is a grab bag of stuff. <laughs> you can find me on my website, letskirkendallbarrett.com, or you can find me on Instagram, at Kirkendall. <laughs> you can call me Ray. You can call me <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, let me do the rough. Okay. Jason. Oh. Please rate and review the podcast wherever you are listening to us. Give us five stars. Helps more people find the show like Patricia. Welcome again. Uh, you can Ooh, find hi, all Patricia. of us. Welcome. You can find all of Eyes us on, on Facebook, Instagram, and threads at Lifetime of Hallmark Podcast. And you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and threads at Big Shot Jason. Kurt. I did update my website. So KurtFitzpatrick.com. It's Kurt with a K, of course. We all know that. Uh, and I'm going to be in the Indianapolis Fringe Festival, Indie Fringe, Labor Day weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, with my show, The Gesture of All Maladies. And then I'm going to be doing Philadelphia Fringe Festival, and that's like two and a half weeks after that. It's uh, I, I don't have the I don't have the dates handy. Look it up. <laughs> Philly Fringe. I'm doing three shows t- like towards the end of September. So check that out. And I'm going to be doing my show, The Real Black Swan, Confessions of America's First Black Drag Queen. Preview start on August 31st. There are plenty of tickets. I'm running until September 24th. And you can find out more information at celebrationtheater.org. Sweet. So what are we going to watch next week, you think? I should say I have two different shows, too. It's it's, it's the... It's the Jester of O'Malley is going to be Indianapolis, and then the uh, behind every Mariska, behind every great Mariska Hargitay is a great Kurt Fitzpatrick will be in the Philadelphia Fringe. Okay. I haven't seen the Mariska Hargitay, but I did see the Jester of all, of all mal- Maladies, and it's very good. Thank you. So, and I've seen right. your show; it's very good as well. Although I saw like a lower scale version of it, though. I have a budget now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have a budget. Ugh. 
Anyway, I want to go out tonight, so I think I'm going to go take a disco nap so I can go out tonight. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Anyway, well, I guess that's it until next week. Gotta go. Bye. Bye. Bye.